the 49ers still in playoff contention? Is it still fair to expect of this team that they will make the playoffs at the end of the season? I, if I was, if you asked me to bet on this, I'm going to say that the 49ers won't be a playoff team. Uh, the 49ers since 1972 was the last time the 49ers started off two and three and made the playoffs. Ooh, that's a long time, Jack. <laughs> the, that's a the, real the, long time. The the the, clo- the closest they've the closest they've come to that where they've been late, you know, uh, under 500 and still made the playoffs was uh, 1985. They were three and two though. Uh, they got to three and two, lost back to back weeks, and fell to three and four, and then were able to rally back and get to uh, to ten and six at the end of the season. And uh, they were the last wild card team that season. They were the fifth wild card. Ooh. That's so. rough. Yeah. When I look at it, it, it seems to me that you have a couple of locks, if you can call them locks this early in the season, but it, it sure does feel like you have Arizona and the Rams both pretty well poised to, 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 to make it to the playoffs. One of them taking the West Tampa mm-hmm. Bay seems barring some catastrophic failure to be uh, capable of taking the South, the Packers in the North, the Cowboys in the East. And so it leaves the 49ers fighting for two remaining wild card playoff spots with the likes of New Orleans, Minnesota, Chicago, Carolina, Atlanta, Washington, Philly, and Seattle. I mean, it is a jam packed log jam of teams right there in the thick of it that seem capable. But the one common theme that I see to all those teams is that they are all on some level inconsistent. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that's those those last teams in are going to be your inconsistent teams that are up and down, and they're going to, you know, it's kind of whoever gets gets hot or gets, you know, does good against the other ones. You know, the Four ers are lucky in that they're lucky and they're not lucky. They're they're unlucky in that three of their losses already are in the NFC, two of them in the in their in their division. But they're lucky in the fact that they get to play Washington or Seattle again. They get to play Minnesota. They get to play Atlanta. They get to play some of those teams that you mentioned. Uh, and so those those games are going to be big if they're still in the in the hunt. Right, because that's where they, they can kind of uh, get tiebreaker advantages and things like that to to the end of the season. Because I think it's really going to come down to that. Can the 49ers get the 10 wins? I think that's what it's going to take to make the playoffs. Eric is not overly optimistic here. Eric says, I'd say about 30% chance the 49ers make the playoffs. I, I'm a bit closer to a coin flip here at this point, but but I'm with you in that if I'm betting on this, if I'm putting money on the line, I believe I'm leaning away from betting on the 49ers making the playoffs. I, I went through and I look at of those incomplete teams that are there right now, just my gut feeling, I see Minnesota and Carolina as the most complete teams and the most capable of putting together a series of wins that put them in contention for those final two wildcard playoff spots. And I see the 49ers right there in that mix. I see the 49ers, depending on how this thing shakes out, being very close to it. But I went through the remaining schedule and figured, well, I'll be generous and I'll give the 49ers a split in the remaining division game. So regardless of how they're able to come away with the two wins, giving them two victories out of the two remaining games against the Rams and the single games remaining against the Seahawks and the Cardinals. I think I had it broken out as them beating the Seahawks, uh, losing to the Cardinals, unfortunately, and then splitting with the Rams based on home or away. And then I started to go through and look at the other matchups, a quick and dirty prediction, if you will, but Colts at home should be winnable. At the Bears against a rookie quarterback, even though it's a long journey across the, uh, the the U.S., I still think that's a winnable game. Come back home, drop the one to the Cardinals, win one at home against the Rams. Go out to Jacksonville. Got to hope that they can pick up a W there, but it's an early start. It's a long road trip. Those are the types of games that can be dropped. Yep. I had it as a W. Vikings at home, I had them dropping it. At the Seahawks, a W. At the Bengals, a W. Falcons at home, a W. At the Titans, a loss. Texans at home, a win. And then I've got the decider coming down to at the Rams in L.A. at the end of the season with a win, either putting the 49ers at 11-6 and six or a loss putting them at 10-7. and seven. I unfortunately, when I went through and did this exercise, put a loss against the Rams there. And that put them at 10 and seven. And and so I think that I land with you that the most likely scenario as it stands at this moment 
is being right there on the cusp and 10 wins probably not being enough unless you have some tiebreakers to make the playoffs this year. Yeah, and I think, you know, you, you look at some of those games, like the Bengals game, when we looked at that at the beginning of the season, that was chalked up as a win. The Bengals are playing much better than than anybody expected. You look at what much the Bengals better. You know, what the Bengals did to Detroit, for example, is very similar to what the 49ers did to Detroit, right? And so how much different are they? The Bengals already beat Minnesota, and Minnesota's a team that you I think you just said the 49ers are going to lose to, right? And they, they yes. beat Minnesota earlier this season. So, you know, that's one. The Jacksonville game, I, I think the 49ers can still win that. But what, what's tough about that one is they're playing on Monday night at home before they travel all the way out to Florida. You know, and that's a tough, that's, that's kind of a brutal. tough ask. And, and they've done, the NFL is doing that to a bunch of teams this year. It's not just the 49ers that have had that kind of turnaround. So it's going to be, that's a game, you know, I, well, I don't think Jacksonville is a very good team. Crazy stuff happens when you have, you know, in the middle of that part of the season, when, if you're, who knows what the 49ers uh, health situation will be at that point. Well, you're not the only one that feels that the Bengals game could be close. We've got James, <laughs> Keneal and Eric all on that. Uh, why Why in the world do you think that Bengals, and believe me, this isn't one where I thought it would be an instant W. It was just one as I went through. I found both the uh, matchup against the Vikings and the Bengals to be too close to call at this moment. So I did the basic coin flip. They'd win one, they'd <laughs> lose the other. Uh, and, and so that is to me, those will be games you need to keep your eye on going forward. What, what became very clear in this exercise for me is the margin of error for the San Francisco 49ers at this point in time in the season, only going into week seven is next to nothing. I mean, they cannot week six, they cannot afford week seven. God, I keep messing myself up here, Jack. Yes, <laughs> it was week six during the bye. I just can't imagine them having uh, being afforded the luxury of dropping any of these games that could be close. No, they can't. They they've they've got the the games that that you look at that that where you feel like they have the advantage. They need to absolutely win those games. So that's the Jaguars, and there's a couple of them in there that I think that you can absolutely say that the 49ers have the advantage on. But but it's really tough when you look at their at the schedule. You look at what they've done so far. I know it's easy to say, well, look what they've done against the Arizona, how good they played there. But then you look and you say, okay, well, look what they did when they were against Philadelphia. And I, that's a different situation because it's early in the season. Home opener for Philadelphia. Philadelphia in that first half still has one of their better defensive players who got hurt in that game and, and was right. lost for the season and things like that. So that's not the same team anymore that the 49ers faced. But uh, I, I just, I, I'm just not really high on this team at this point, based off of what we've seen of them from a, from a, from really a preparation standpoint, they just continually make the same errors week in and week out. A real lack of consistency that is maddening. Absolutely maddening. A couple of questions here coming in, in the comments, a quick one here from Bryant saying, uh, Rob and Jack, why do you think the 49ers actually play better on the road at the moment? Just pointing out that the last win at Levi's Stadium was 365 days ago. It was October 18th of 2020 against the Rams. 49ers taking that one 24 to 16. Obviously, they finished out the season with home games in Arizona. It was a weird year for most of us, but... Do you think that there's something to the 49ers being better prepared for these road games? I don't know. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm an old guy, so I'm going to say I think it's just because they, they, they've got the uh, the curse of Candlestick Park on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you know, a I, painful I, curse to have because that was such a sweet dump. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, exactly. I mean, it's funny. I I, uh, I spent a lot of time over the the weekend. It was I my my son had a game and pop Warner game up in the, up in the Bay Area and. Uh, it was in Oakland, and I started looking back. I remember there was a big fire back in 1991 in the Oakland Hills, and I remember seeing that from Candlestick Park, and so that kind of got me down a rabbit hole. It took me down memory lane with Candlestick Park again. Man, oh, I have I have a lot of memories from that place. Absolutely, a lot of when I go through and I list the number of games that I was fortunate to be at, just because of the time in you know in space that me and my father ended up at games in candlestick and how good the 40 49ers were were during those years it's ridiculous the number of 
fantastic games and unforgettable moments that that I was able to be a part of there at Candlestick. And it makes me sad that it's gone. But yeah, yeah, no, I, that's I, I, I pretty much grew up up there. I mean, we, my brother and I had season tickets from 85 till 2002. Oof. And so it's 49er games. I was at the stick in 1982 when Joe Morgan hit the home run to, to knock the Dodgers out of the playoffs. Beautiful. Uh, stuff like that. So there's just, there's just way too many memories of that place. And it's, you know, it's like you said, it was a dump, but it was the 49ers dump or it was our, it was our dump. And, and uh, as nice as Levi's is, uh, the Candlestick Park was a great place to watch a ball game. It was our dump. Well, we're about uh-huh. to head into a rapid fire segment where I throw some questions at you and get your take. But one more from the crowd here. Keneal wants to know, Rob, does the record prediction change based on whether we start Trey or Jimmy? So you didn't do a formal record prediction, but when you look going forward, do you see fewer losses or more losses when you switch out Jimmy for Trey? I would go with more losses. I think I think the 49ers are one and four at this point of the season if Trey Lance had started week one. I think they still beat Detroit. The 49ers are just so much better than Detroit was. Uh, but I think I don't think they would have beaten uh, uh, Philadelphia. That's fair. I mean, that was it was close. It, when you look at the games that were certainly winnable, and I think that we've got some comments that, that talk about uh, how close these games were, going to this one here by Gizmo, where he says, we almost beat the Packers. Why is everyone giving up? I mean, first and foremost, I definitely am not giving up. And I'm with Bryant on this statement that we can still make the playoffs and that as fans, we've got to be in that supportive uh, ease up a bit method. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think the point that Jack and I are getting to is you have reached that point where you just can't afford any more mistakes. And and this team appears to be one that to this point is inconsistent in what they do and making a considerable number of mistakes. And therefore you have to wonder if they're capable of running out the rest of the season without making those same mistakes that to this point they seem to make consistently. Yeah, I, I like the fact, you know, what he says there, that they did almost beat the Packers. And, and that's, you know, the Packers are one of the better teams. And, and they lost to the Packers, though, because they made too many mistakes throughout the game. And that goes back to the inconsistency piece that we're kind of talking about there, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's why they lost that game. Or just, or let's just, let's just turn that around for a minute. That's just, where are we right now if they win that game? What happens if the, if the defense holds at the end of that game? This whole narrative that we have around the quarterbacks is different if, if it's a completely different conversation totally about the Green Bay different. game, if the defense holds it on that last series of the game instead of giving up the, the field goal. Jimmy's a hero, right? I mean, it's uh-huh. a last second comeback victory. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yep. And that's, you know, anytime you have a come from behind win, whether it's Joe Montana, Jimmy Garoppolo, not trying to put those two in the same, saying that they're the same player, but I'm just talking no. about quarterbacks. You know, I'm taking two quarterbacks on the opposite end of the spectrum. Right. You need you need the defense to hold up their end of the bargain. Joe Montana doesn't come have these comebacks. He doesn't win this. He doesn't defeat the D- Dallas Cowboys if it's not for Eric Wright. Even after the even after the catch to to uh, uh, Dwight Clark, you know, it's people gloss it's, over the defensive holds that have to happen after those epic offensive touchdowns. Yeah, 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 so. absolutely. 